Hey friends, I have another ingredient that I am going to be experimenting with today and adding into my egg white bread. I have had several people mention butter powder and I had the idea also myself when I was thinking about the effect that the powdered eggs have on the bread. I was thinking, do other powdered fats have the same effect. I've had several people comment and say that they have used butter powder anywhere from like a teaspoon to three tablespoons to a fourth of a cup and have had really good results. Also, the Keto Village here on YouTube did an experiment where she added a fourth of a cup of butter powder and she got some really good results, so I'm excited to try it. One of the struggles with the egg white bread is that it is so lean that sometimes it can be dry. So we're all trying to find these little hacks and tweaks in order to get moisture into the bread so it doesn't taste as dry. Fat is a really great way to get moisture in, but the problem is when you add fat to the whipped egg whites, it makes them fall. So trying to find something that would add the fat but without making the egg whites fall is the trick. Now, I do know that the fat from the egg yolks, the dried egg yolks, or the whole egg powder, depending on what you have and what you use, uh, that does make the batter fall a little bit, but that's actually, I think, what is giving the bread such a good texture. So I'm not worried about the batter falling a little bit. The trick is just not getting it to fall too much. So I'm really curious to see what happens if I just add in some of the butter powder into my current favorite bread recipe. So that is gonna be my first experiment today. I'm gonna to see how this one goes and then I may adjust from there and try some different things. I am using my base recipe where I do egg white powder, allulose, cream of tartar, salt, and then I am adding in the arrowroot. I did a video the other day with um, some different add-ins that you can try to give better texture to the bread. And my current favorite is arrowroot starch. If you're interested in hearing all about that, I will put that video up in the cards. And yes, the arrowroot does add a little bit of carbs, but I use such a small amount that it only adds about one carb per serving. So for me, the improvement in the texture and taste is worth that one extra extra carb per serving, but definitely you can leave it out if that's not something you wanna do. I also will be doing my one tablespoon of dried egg yolk powder. As always, you can use whole egg powder instead of the yolk powder. If you use the yolk powder, it's a tablespoon measurement. If you use the whole egg powder, use three tablespoons. So this first loaf, I am gonna be using the yolk powder, but I am curious to know if the butter powder alone without the yolk or the whole egg powder will have the same effect on the texture, that will be an interesting experiment to try as well. So I'm gonna start with just making my base recipe with my arrowroot add-in. I only add in two tablespoons of that. And then I will also add in a fourth of a cup of the butter powder. And I will add that at the very end along with the yolk powder. First thing I'm gonna do is start my oven preheating to 325. I'm doing one and a half cups of the egg white powder and that comes out to about 120 grams. And if you are measuring without a scale, measure a little bit less. I would, if I didn't have a scale, I would measure one and a quarter cups of the egg white powder, just because it condenses so much when you scoop it that um, you can easily get too much, even though it looks like you're measuring out exactly one and a half cups. Always measure by weight if you can. If you can't, you're really running the risk of getting too dry of a bread. Next is one quarter cup of allulose, which comes out to 36 grams. I totally forgot to do my new trick of adding in the water first. If you add in the water first and then throw the powdered ingredients on top of it, you don't have to worry about powder getting stuck on the bottom, but I was just on autopilot and started adding my dry ingredients first, so I'll make sure to mix it in real well before I blend. One half teaspoon of cream of tartar, one half teaspoon of Redmond Real Salt, and two tablespoons of the arrowroot flour, powder, or starch. They're all the same thing, just different names. And that comes out to 16 grams. Now I'm adding in my one and a half cups of water that comes to 354 milliliters. And I did wanna mention that you can totally add active dry yeast or nutritional yeast or any other of those kind of flavorings that you like. I have not found a way to add those to get a flavor that I 
either like or that I even notice. If I do too little, I don't notice it. If I do more, I don't really care for the flavor. So I'm not adding that, but if that's something you like, definitely feel free to add yeasts. Just gonna mix this up here real quick to make sure I get all of the powder off the bottom. All right, now I'm gonna turn this on and get it slowly up to full speed, and then I will whip it at full speed for five minutes. Okay, it's been going for five minutes, and now the moment of truth. First, I'm gonna add in my tablespoon of yolk powder. Then I'm gonna add in my fourth of a cup of butter powder, and that should be about 24 grams according to the nutrition pack. So if this butter powder totally flattens my batter, my backup plan is to use it as a pancake batter. Cook it on my griddle and see what I get there. All right, here we go. Just on level one and up to level two to get it fully mixed in. It's deflating, but not too much yet. Some deflation is good. A lot of deflation is not good. It's all about balance, just like with everything in life, right? While my batter was whipping up, I got my pan ready. I'm gonna just dump this in here. It is definitely deflating faster than with just the yolk powder. So this is one where definitely can't waste any time. I gotta get it in the oven as fast as possible. And the batter is very, very creamy. It's not as stiff, which is kind of nice as far as pouring it into the pan. When it's super stiff, you really have to shape it in order to not get all those big air bubbles in it. All right. Into the oven this goes as quickly as possible. I set my timer for 40 minutes, just like my other breads that have any of the whole egg or yolk powder. But of course I will be checking it starting around like 30 minutes just to see. While that loaf is baking, I'm starting on another experiment here. Since I did see that the butter powder had a deflation effect, of course, which I expected, I am going to try this version omitting the yolk powder and just replacing it with one tablespoon of butter powder at the end instead and see if I still get that really nice like big bubble texture. The thing that the yolk powder and the whole egg powder does to the bread is it takes away that memory foam texture of the really, really tight bubbles and it gives more of a regular bread texture where it has nice big air bubbles and it makes the bread super soft. And I'm just curious if the butter powder alone, just the one tablespoon, would be enough to give that same effect to the bread. So I have my water, my egg white powder, allulose, cream of tartar, arrowroot, and salt again. I'm gonna whip this up five minutes and then I will add in my butter powder. Ooh. All right, one tablespoon of the butter powder. So if this works, it'll make me think that probably most powdered fats would work, like MCT oil powder, coconut oil powder, maybe coconut milk powder, possibly like buttermilk powder, which might give it some nice flavor. Although with the small, small amount that you add, I'm, I don't know that a lot of the flavor will come through. I'm hoping that I'll get some butter flavor from this, but one tablespoon in the whole loaf is not a lot. Once again, I got my pan ready while it was mixing, and I do have a video on how I get my parchment paper to lay down flat in here, so I will link that up in the cards if you're curious. This batter is more stiff, like regular. It's more regular. The other one kind of started deflating a lot really fast. This one is not. It's not deflating much at all, so I'm curious to know how much butter powder I can add without getting too much deflation because the more I can add the more flavor and the more fat is going to get into the bread but then of course I don't want too much to make it deflate too much and get a bad texture 
Again, it's all about balance. This egg white bread is just a metaphor for life. All right, again, 40 minutes, unless it looks like it's done sooner than that. Okay, this one still had two minutes of cook time left, but it really felt like it was done, so I went ahead and pulled it out. So 38 minute cook time on this one. It looks really nice on the outside, a little bit different of a texture on the top, but I'm really interested to see what the inside texture is when I cut into it. It's been cooling here for about 10 minutes or so, and I'm gonna take it out of the pan, let it cool the rest of the way. I like how the sides are not sunk in. Definitely a good sign. Oh, I can smell the butter. I just smelled it. The top, you can see it definitely didn't stay risen very much, but that's not always a bad thing. Sometimes the sinking actually helps the texture inside, but we'll have to see um, if that much egg yolk powder and butter powder together was too much and made it too eggy. So I'm gonna let it cool for a little while longer and then we'll cut into it and see what it looks like. So I also pulled this one out two minutes early because it really just felt like it was done. Now look at how this loaf turned out. Got some crazy shape going on. It kind of just cracked right there on the side and puffed up a little bit. So definitely a different experience than with the egg yolk powder. I was wondering if the one tablespoon of butter powder would be the same as one tablespoon of egg yolk powder, but definitely got a little bit different result. But as always, it's gonna come down to the inside texture. So can't wait to cut into this. Okay, now for the moment of truth. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. Ooh, I was worried that I'd have that weird, big bubble eggy texture that I got before when I added too much of the egg yolk powder or too much of the um, whole egg powder, but it's not looking too bad here. So you can see there's a little streak here where it didn't quite all get mixed in. The This is the loaf that has the yolk powder, one tablespoon of yolk powder, plus a fourth of a cup of the butter powder. So to get this good of a texture with adding that much fat to the recipe, I think that's a pretty good sign. Because I know if I had added that much of either the yolk powder or the whole egg powder, I would have gotten that really weird eggy texture. So I think this butter powder is gonna be a good way to get fat into the bread. So it'd be great for like higher fat days. It wouldn't be as good for lean days or protein sparing modified fast days, but it might be perfect for regular keto days where you're wanting a little bit more fat. I'm definitely gonna be more careful next time about getting it all mixed in because I got this streak of memory foam and I have it going through the whole loaf. Definitely wanna get the, all the, um, any fat powders that you get mixed in or the egg powders because without it, that is the texture that you get throughout the whole bread. Okay, but of course the most important thing is how it tastes. Even if it looks pretty with a nice texture, if it tastes bad, it's not gonna be worth it. It doesn't have an overpoweringly butter flavor. There's just a hint, it feels like. But the flavor is really good, and it's not dry, because it has that much added fat in it. I actually like the flavor quite a bit. You can get the butter, like the second bite I just took there, I can definitely taste the butter more, and I think it adds a really nice flavor to the bread. So I think this is definitely a win. I'm gonna be experimenting more with different amounts, to kind of try to nail down you know, the optimal amount and the optimal way to mix it in. I wonder if the yolk or the whole egg powder is absolutely necessary. I'm interested to cut into the next loaf here with this, just the one tablespoon of butter powder in it and see how that is. And then from there, I might try a loaf with no yolk powder and more butter powder and see what happens.
All right, so it doesn't look too bad. The sides and the bottom look pretty nice. I got a little bit of sinkage on the side here, but not terrible. This is just the weird part. And I wonder if I just didn't put quite as much batter in the pan if it would have been fine. But let's see what the inside texture looks like. The bubbles are looking pretty tight, so I think it's a little too close to memory foam, but let's look at it up close here. That's what the texture looks like. Um, it's not a super fine memory foam, but it's a little too close to memory foam for my liking. It's very soft. It looks okay. Um, I am interested in trying it with no yolk powder again and doing like two or three tablespoons of the butter powder and kind of see what amount of butter powder I can get away with adding and see if it makes the texture a little bit better. But let me give this a taste real quick. It is very, very soft. The taste is good. The texture is really nice because it's so soft. I don't really taste the butter but there was only the one tablespoon in there, so not a lot per capita. But it's a really tasty bread. Definitely on the right track here. I'm gonna whip up another batch and do no yolk powder. And I might just go ahead and do a whole fourth of a cup again like I did on here, but do it without the yolk powder and see how it turns out. Because I think the more butter powder I'm able to add and still get a good texture, the better flavor I'm gonna get. So I will be back when that next loaf is done. I'm gonna keep eating this because this is so good. So I made two more test loaves. Neither of these have yolk powder or whole egg powder. I think with the butter powder, no yolk or no whole egg powder is gonna be important. This one I put in one fourth of a cup of butter powder. This one I put in two tablespoons. So you can see this, well you can kind of see, this one that only has two tablespoons of butter powder did rise a little bit more, but not drastically, so that's interesting. And you remember the other one that I did with the fourth of a cup of butter powder plus the one tablespoon of yolk powder sunk down really low, so it was nearly level with the top of the pan. This one is still risen up, so I'm hopeful that the texture is really good on this. So I wanna cut these open and look at the texture of both of these. It's possible that three tablespoons right in between these two is gonna be the best, but I wanted to see what result I got from the fourth of a cup and the two tablespoons first. I also expect that I will get a much better shape of a loaf if I put less batter in the pan. It won't grow quite as much and crack. But I didn't want to do that yet because I kind of want to keep all the variables as similar as possible, not change up another variable until I get the texture figured out. But I do have that in mind that eventually when I get this figured out, I will reduce the amount of batter in the pan and I think that will fix the cracking problem. On these, I did put a line down the middle of each one just to try to direct the crack where to go, and that worked pretty well. So first off, I'm gonna slice the 1 fourth of a cup butter powder version or loaf. Uh, I will say that obviously I'm on the right track here because this one that just had the one tablespoon of butter powder in it has already been more than half eaten by members of the family who don't normally like egg bread, so I think I'm really on the right track here to get a loaf that everybody is going to enjoy. I'm very interested in the texture on this one. Ooh, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. I'm able to get super thin slices on this. That is very nice. I tried really hard to get it all really mixed in this time, but I do have a few spots of memory foam in there. I'm just gonna have to work harder to get that really mixed. I do really like the texture. The bubbles are definitely bigger than this one. Let's see, getting there. So this was only one tablespoon of butter powder and this one was 
four tablespoons or a fourth of a cup. So it looks like I can add a fair amount of the butter powder without getting that weird eggy um, texture. If I added a fourth of a cup of the yolk powder, it would be like nasty egg texture, really, really weird. And so definitely the butter powder does not have the same effect as the egg powder, but it does have a similar effect of stabilizing the sides and giving a little bit bigger of bubbles in the center to give a better bread texture. Look how beautiful it is. I'm gonna give it a rip here for you. That looks super nice. All right, I'm gonna give it a taste, see what it's like. The butter flavor is not super strong on the front, but like after, you can, you can kind of get a hint of it, like a salty, savory butter butteriness. The middle is so soft. It's got an amazing texture. Yeah, that flavor, that butter flavor comes like at the back end. It's really good. So it's not like overpoweringly butter flavored. It doesn't taste like fatty at all, you know, because the typical typical bread doesn't have any fat in it, or very, very little. Um, and a lot of keto breads out there that are made with like almond flour and different things like that have a lot of fat in them. And so they're very heavy. And this doesn't have that at all. It's still super, super light and extremely fluffy. And I wanted to go ahead and do the crumple test for you. I did this test on my add-ins video where I was comparing different add-ins for the bread. And remember, this does have the arrowroot in it. I do want to try a loaf with no arrowroot to show all of you guys that aren't wanting to use arrowroot how it works in that as well, that arrowroot isn't the defining factor in this bread. But for now, let's do the crumple test. So in that other video, I showed you a crumple of my egg white bread that has yolk powder or whole egg powder in it, but no other add-ins beyond that. And basically you can crumple it up into a ball and squish it. And then you can open it back up and it like, like a sponge just opens back to the same, basically the same shape of bread that was before. But what you want with bread is for it to really crumple down and start to mush. Like if you took a piece of Wonder Bread and you crumpled it in your hands, there's no opening it back up. It's like starchy and it just turns into like a ball of starch. So with all these different add-ins, I'm kind of wanting to get that effect where when you press it, the fingerprint stays rather than bouncing right back like the original egg white bread. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the crumple on this and we'll see what we get. So there's my ball of bread and it's pretty well crumpled. And that's what you want. Like when you chew on it, you want it to fall apart like that. You don't want it to be a sponge that you just have to bite into a million pieces in order to swallow. I think that's what gives it that choky feeling. Again, great adjective to describe some of the egg white bread out there. So I think the butter powder really, really makes a difference in giving it that squishability. The arrowroot powder also adds to that. So that's why I am interested in doing one loaf with the butter powder, without the arrowroot powder, just to see how much the butter powder is affecting that squishability. As far as the flavor of this, it is very, very good. The basic egg white bread, I love for how clean of a taste it has. A lot of low carb breads that I've made in the past, they have so much like plant fiber in them that they just taste like whatever plant fiber is in them, like coconut flour, oat fiber, chia seeds, flax seeds, all of those kind of things. I don't like the flavor at all, and the, the flavors are very strong. With the egg white bread, it's always had a very clean flavor, which is something great about it. Whatever you add to it, it just soaks up that flavor. But then one of the things that people can complain about sometimes is that it doesn't have enough flavor. And people add all kinds of things to try to enhance the flavor, like yeast and nutritional yeast, spices and all that kind of thing. And I think the butter powder, is another thing that we can add to that list of flavor enhancers. Just gives it that really nice, buttery, salty, savory taste. Okay, enough on this bread. I could talk about this bread forever. Let's try real quick the two tablespoons of butter powder loaf and see how that is. The texture looks real nice on this one too. Probably a little tighter than on the quarter cup version, 
but not as tight as the one with one tablespoon, which of course that makes sense. The more you add, the bigger the bubbles. The less you add, the more it gets to memory foam. That really doesn't have bad texture at all. So let's compare it to the um, one tablespoon version. You can see there is a difference between the one tablespoon and the two tablespoon. Feels very soft. All right, now let's compare to the quarter cup version. They're actually pretty comparable in feel and in look as far as like the holes and stuff. That's interesting. You can see that the one quarter cup version is smaller, like the size of the slice is just a little bit smaller. So this one didn't sink as much. Give you a good peek at the texture here. And let me give it a test. That one is really good too. Not as much of a butter flavor at the end, like the one fourth of a cup version, obviously, because it had half the amount of the butter powder in it, but definitely a really good bread and super soft, not choky. The crust is still nice and chewy, but not too chewy. I can't say anything bad about this loaf it is very very good so to get a really good texture with the butter powder i think i would say don't add less than two tablespoons per loaf but then up to a quarter cup worked well also and so if you want that stronger bread flavor or if you want the extra fat um, you can add the quarter cup and definitely up the fat and up the flavor Okay, so there's two more loaves that I want to try today in this video. For the first one, I'm basically going to redo the quarter cup butter version, but I'm gonna reduce the ingredients so that I think I will just get enough to fill my pan and not have the top grow so big and crack. I think instead of one and a half cups of egg white powder, I'm gonna do one and a quarter cups. Also one and a quarter cup water, and then I'm gonna reduce the butter powder down to three tablespoons. So the ratios are gonna be a little bit different, but I'm gonna to try to make it so it's not some weird measurement. That's gonna be the first loaf. The second loaf, if that one works out just fine, I'm gonna do a second loaf with no arrowroot starch. And just for those of you where arrowroot is not an option for you, I want to show if that will give the same delicious bread texture that you're looking for without the addition of the arrowroot. Okay, here are my results with the adjusted measurements to make like not quite as crazy of a loaf. It worked to make not quite as crazy of a loaf, but I still got the splitting here. This part got super smooth, so that was interesting. I will put the measurements up on the screen and in the description below um, of what I did. I tried to keep it simple by just adjusting the powder, the egg white powder, the water, and the um, butter powder I reduced down to three tablespoons. But then everything else stayed the same, like the cream of tartar, allulose, and salt. So it's a little bit different of ratios on the ingredients. And it didn't turn out too bad. I don't know if this is gonna be my final perfect butter bread, but um, I think I am getting really close. But I really am interested to see what the inside looks like. All right, very, very soft. Got some big bubbles, definitely a nice texture. I feel like I'm not gonna be able to get as beautiful of slice shapes with this as I do with the whole egg powder or the yolk powder, but I do really love the taste and I really love the texture. So let's see, there's a good rip. And let me just taste it just to make sure it's not too different than the last one. The taste is really good. The flavor of the butter powder just gives that little back end savory, salty butter taste. And it's very delicious. My husband gave the thumbs up on this one. He said he felt like it dissolved in the mouth better, which I feel like it does too. Autumn made a grilled cheese sandwich out of actually the first one that she said she really liked and it made a really good grilled cheese sandwich. Several of the other kids have had some and liked it. Renee had her peanut butter and honey sandwich on a slice earlier. So we are definitely making progress towards a 
family friendly, non keto people friendly loaf of high protein bread. I am so excited. Before my experiment is completely done, I'm gonna go ahead and make another loaf with the same measurements I used for this one and just omit the arrowroot flour so that for those of you who do not use arrowroot flour or you're not willing to use it, um, you can see the difference in texture with just the butter powder as the addition. Here is how the loaf turned out that has no arrowroot added. I meant to do three tablespoons of the butter powder just like I did with the last uh, loaf, but I messed up in the moment and did a fourth of a cup instead. So this is just the base recipe with a fourth of a cup of butter powder added at the end. I did have to cook it a little bit extra long. I think it was about 45 minutes that I cooked it. And you can see it didn't brown as much as the other one. I really do not know why that happened. But let's go ahead and slice this and see what the inside texture looks like. All right, I like the texture. It's got those nice big bubbles. It's not memory foam. It smells good. It doesn't have that super wet feeling. Um, the arrowroot does soak up a lot of that wet feeling, but this doesn't have any arrowroot, but I still, it doesn't feel super wet, so that's good. There's a slice and a rip. All right, let's try the um, press test. That looks pretty good. It's popping back a little bit, but not all the way. That's definitely good. The butter powder definitely added that because there's no arrowroot or inulin or anything else or xanthan gum that gives that effect. So it's definitely the butter powder that is causing it to stay mushed down when I press it. And that's good because that means it gives you more the, of the dissolve in your mouth kind of feel when you eat it. Let's try the crumple test on this one pretty crumpled and if I try to open it back up um, it opens a little bit but it's definitely misshapen and that's what you want again that gives you that nice melt in your mouth type feel rather than like chewing on a sponge where you just have to chew it up into tiny pieces this actually mushes when you chew it okay now let me give it a quick taste test just to see about that the taste is really good. There, again, is not a ton of butter flavor. It's not like I would taste it and think it has an overpoweringly buttery taste, but it's soft. It has the fat from the butter, and so it gives that nice soft texture. And like I said, the powdered version of the butter is a way to get more fat into the bread without deflating the batter completely. I have experimented with adding um, like liquid fats to the bread. And if you add more than just a tiny, tiny amount, it just completely deflates the batter. So this is one trick to get some fat into the bread and still keep it in a bread shape. I am definitely loving the flavor and the texture of this bread. I think this is definitely a win. And I'm, I'm gonna be playing with the butter powder more. Um, I really, really like it. Even without the arrowroot, you don't really need the arrowroot when you have the butter powder. The texture of this bread is super good. It does not have that wet feeling or the sound when you squish it. And so if you are one that is wanting to avoid using arrowroot starch, butter powder might be a really good option. A few takeaways from this experiment. Powdered fats don't automatically just do the same thing as the powdered yolk and powdered whole egg. It does give a similar effect. Some of the effects are the same, but it is a different experience. Also, another takeaway is that butter powder at least and possibly other powdered fats are a good way to get fat into the bread. If you are wanting a bread that's not just for lean days, but that you want to have on like higher fat keto days, um, powdered fats like butter powder. I haven't experimented with other powdered fats, but at least butter powder, you can get more fat in than you can with mixing in liquid fat. So I am very happy with what I've learned with this experiment. I hope it was interesting for you guys. Let me know if you have experimented with any other uh, powdered fats. That would be very interesting to find out. I will definitely be playing with it more and I will see you guys in another video.